everyone. Amer here again with another Mission Impossible episode review. This is the time I'm going to be reviewing Season 1, Episode 17. It's called The Frame. So we start out with Dan getting his instructions as a, as, at an aptitude testing center. I sort of remember those from back in the day. I'm kind of dating myself a little bit. The mission is very, very simple. Stop Jack Wellman, a mafia boss who is killing government officials and replacing them with his own puppets for mob purposes. We have the usual team, including a guy named Tino, who runs an Italian restaurant, which Wellman uh, really, really likes. And Tino will cater the meal at tomorrow's meeting of the four senior mob bosses who, and, who are going to have a meal and then they're going to divide up all of their money that they've earned over the year or whatever. Cinnamon worries about her way out of the mission based on her role. Dan assures us ominously, or her ominously, that the mob generally doesn't kill women. Okay, I guess we can get some comfort out of that. At the meeting, one of the bosses, Vito Scalisi, expresses his concern about Wellman overreaching traditional mob techniques with his new methods because it's gotten public attention and heat put on them. The other two bosses agree with Scalisi and also voice their doubts. But Wellman says he wants to expand, and if they have a better idea, he'd like to hear it. Wellman points out that his new ploy of getting government contracts through his installed people is what's generating all the cash that they're about to enjoy. But the others are still worried about the risks. Tino, very nervous, arrives with the IMF as his staff, reassuring Wellman that they've been vetted, Dan and Willie, the chefs, know how to be quiet, and the main way to Rollin is death. So nothing to worry about from Wellman's point of view. Barney heads downstairs, hidden, to work on Wellman's safe in the wine cellar, and a hidden cinnamon heads upstairs to Wellman's bedroom, drilling into his wall. That'll pay off later. Rollin brings drinks to the bosses, and Scalise doubts whether Rollin is actually deaf, firing a shot right near Rollin's ear. Fortunately, Rollin is able to avoid selling the pain until he's safely back in the kitchen. Wellman tells Tino they're ready for dinner, and spots Dan's shadow on the stairs, figuring him to be a thief. Tino covers for Dan, saying he's just a simple guy from the old country who wanted to have a look at a big fancy house, and fortunately Wellman buys it. Tino and Rollin bring out the soup, which Rollin clumsily spills on Scalise, who heads upstairs to Jack's room to change his suit. Overhearing someone in a nearby room, Scalise finds a scantily clad cinnamon, who's been ordered to hide. Scalise understands and promises that he'll be quiet. The bosses keep discussing their concerns over their salad course. Willie and Barney set up explosive charges above Wellman's safe, rigged to go on Dan's signal button covered up with silencers to suppress the rumble. As they set it off, Dan lights a fire to put the finishing touches on the lamb entree to further cover the noise. One of the wine bottles isn't good, leading Wellman to go down to the wine cellar where Barney is working. Rollin is able to use a signal to warn him, and Barney is able to hide, but it's a close call. Wellman tells the team to serve dessert, then get lost, so they have to hurry up. Willie brings the safe up to Wellman's room, while Barney finishes torching through the concrete into the safe downstairs, as Rollin stalls with dessert and coffee as long as possible. The safe is emptied, the IMF starts to clear out, with Dan staying behind to clean up the obvious part of the mess inside the safe, and he hides above the safe as the bosses head down and find the briefcase that's supposed to be full of cash empty. But they see the torch marks above as evidence of the break-in. Scalise thinks he has it figured out. He brings the bosses upstairs to Jack's room, allowing Dan to get out. And they find Cinnamon there, who tells Jack she said it wouldn't, she knew it wouldn't work. Jack, of course, says he doesn't know who the heck she is. Cinnamon subtly leads them to the safe hidden behind a painting on the wall. Wellman lunges at Cinnamon, but the other bosses hold him back, demanding he open the safe. They warn Cinnamon to keep her mouth shut and let her go. A gunshot is heard as the IMF drives away, as, for some reason, Cinnamon's head obscures Willie in the final shot, for some reason. But, mission accomplished. I'm going to give this one a grade of a solid A. It is the original Mission Impossible perfect frame in every imaginable way. Heck, that's the title of the episode. Um... 
see what happens when Dan Briggs is motivated, when Stephen Hill is motivated to really put his all into this guy. Um, it, it, it's, it's just amazing. I, I mean, I know it's not really Dan Briggs doing it. He's just being written this way. But I believe it. I really look at this and say to my, and I can picture in my head, I, I believe that Briggs puts this plan together, picturing that final scene in his mind with the bad guys all looking at Wellman and a safe that he claims never existed and that he can't open in his own bedroom, right? And, and, and knows that if he can get them to that point, that'll be it. That's the mission right there. And then he works backwards and figures out, okay, what are all the steps that I need to get do to get it there? And I can, I can see that playing out. And even though I know what's going to happen, I really enjoy watching this episode, just watching it play out. And that's when you know when you've really crafted a great plan and a great story. When you're excited and interested in seeing it, even though you know what's going to happen. Um, also really good. Um, outstanding teamwork. To say that this is great teamwork is a massive, massive understatement. Even though this is what we would call a bottle episode, it all takes place on one set in one house. It's not like the team is going here and there, here and there. It doesn't have to be. That's not really the point. You can do this in one setting um, and it, it, as long as you craft a good story, right, and, 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 and just lay it out properly. Um, perfect, perfect example of what this show is really all about. Classic, classic teamwork. Also, really good, Arthur Batani does, the actor who plays Tino. He's a regular on the show. He plays all sorts of different roles. Uh, you know, sometimes he's, he's a good guy, sometimes he's a bad guy. Uh, but he's always, always really, really good when he's on the show. And this time, the way he plays Tino, worried about this, worried about that. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? You know, these guys are mafia mafia people. You know, we got to be careful all this. It, it's, it's, it's great. He really, really plays that role. Uh, his, his role well. The only thing that would bring this episode a little bit down and keep it from getting an A plus is that there is padding and it gets a, a little bit grating where the boss is over and over again talking about, gee, Jack, we're really kind of concerned about your new methods. It's like, okay, you said it once. You don't have to go over it over and over and over again. And that to me is just really kind of to fill time. Um, that's That bothered me a little bit. Something really in, in, interesting that I'll just kind of point out. I have absolutely no idea firsthand about how the mob works. But it is kind of prescient, I think, um, at least from what I understand, in that the, the methods and the strategies that are laid out here, uh, you know, by Jack Wellman talking about how, you know, hey, instead of doing, you know, the traditional things that we've done in the past, you know, the gangster type things, maybe there's more money to be had and just, you know, we have finding our way into lucrative government contracts and that sort of thing. And again, I have no firsthand knowledge, but that kind of stuff does go on. Even if it's not at the mob level, there's all sorts of, you know, shenanigans and things like that when it comes to big business and the contracting and the, uh, you know, the building industry and that sort of thing. And it's kind of interesting that, you know, more than 50 years ago, that's something that, that that's kind of being talked about. I found that interesting anyway. Okay, so that's my uh, review of this episode. As I say, it's one of the definitely one of the better ones of season one, one of the best of the, in, in the series overall. Give it a solid A. Uh, thanks for wa uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave your comments. I really look forward to seeing uh, more and more comments as, as I go along, and I'll see you next time.